Hello YouTube, time to learn your first hack. Hello my dear viewer, you look very handsome today because we will create for many of you the first C Sharp external hack. At the end of this tutorial you will have an application that can both read and write the game's memory which are the essentials of game hacking so don't skip this tutorial. After this one you will be able to continue and create better hacks with time. I do this for absolutely free, so what you can do to help me without spending a dime is to subscribe, hit the like button, but also write a nice comment or a video idea that I should cover next. But before you try creating your first hack, remember that some games ban you for cheating, so please research the terms of agreement for your game and don't try it on a game that doesn't allow cheating. Before we head into the showcase, just and I have the example game Assault Cube. Do you have something else? But for this Assault Cube, we have our very own C sharp memory hack, which can or which has two features. So the fir first feature that we will take a look at is reading our ammunition. As you can see here, so if I hit play, right, the player's ammunition. As you can see, 15, 14, 13, 12, and so on. So you will learn how to read values inside of a game, and we will also learn how to overwrite them. So, so let's try that, and now look at the game. We have unlimited ammo and it's frozen as well, so it always stays put. So you will not only learn how to read values of games, you will also learn how to write over them. And this will work if you restart the, restart the application or use it on a different computer and so on. So I hope you enjoy. Okay, so let's start this tutorial by opening our game and finding a value to change. I have a salt cube here and I want to change the ammo. We will open Sheet Engine and attach Sheet Engine to our game. The next thing we will do is to search for the value that we want to change, in my case 20. The problem is there is too many addresses, so we would have to change the value by shooting, for example, and then search for the new value. After the second search, we have two addresses. Now, that's something we can work with, and we will check each of these addresses for the correct one. We can check these addresses by changing their values to something else. So, we set the first address to the value of 999, and as you can see, we have more than enough bullets. We can rename this address to ammo and remove the second address that we know didn't work. We have our ammo address, but we will need a static way to get this address. So we will begin our pointer scan and the max level of offsets will be four. You can increase it if you don't find any results and we will call the pointer scan something similar to the value that we're seeking. Now, we have all of these pointer paths which lead to our ammunition. They are relative to the game module, so they will hopefully stay static, but we have to filter the pointers that are not working out, so we will have to restart the game and reattach sheet engine to a salt cube and check which pointers are still pointing to the ammo. We can see on the right that there's still some pointers pointing to our ammo, but we will use the rescan memory function and value to find, type our ammunition to only have the correct pointer paths left. We still have some faulty pointers, so I will repeat the process of restarting the game 
and rescanning for the value. But when we're done with that, we should have some pointers that are pointing to our memory. Now that we have our pointers, we can double click on them to add them to the address table. Just click some of these pointers. I will use the .exe pointers. They are more reliable. And when you have the addresses or the pointers in the address table, we can write them down on the notepad to use them in our c -sharp project. All right, let's create that c -sharp project now. We will create a new console app. The name doesn't really matter. And it will be the .NET 6 version of C Sharp. So we have the default text and let's just change it to mark our hack. Then we will head into the NuGet package manager and install my beautiful memory library. Now you will have to check whether your game is for the two or 64 bit for that. So let's open a task manager and check that. So inside of the task manager, you will go under details and inside of the details, if you have it already, it will say the architecture of the application. Now you can add it by clicking on one of the columns and then clicking select column. You can see here that the AC client, which is Assault Cube, shows the architecture 86, which means it's 32 bit. If you have 64, it will be the 64 bit. So after we have installed the correct NuGet package for the correct architecture, we can change the project options to match our architecture. Mine was 32 bit, so I will use the x86. If you have 64 bit, use the x64. To include the memory library in our code, we will write using sweat 32 And then we can instantiate the sweat library by creating a new sweat instance. And within the constructor, we will write the process name of the game. If you have the main module in your pointer, which means if it says .exe, you can probably use the title before the .exe. Otherwise, just go into Sheet Engine and check the process name there. Now, the first thing in our pointer chain was the module. So we will get the module base address from sweat.getModuleBase. The module name will be what's in citation marks in our pointer. What we will do now is to declare the ammo address. So we will create a new int pointer. That's how this web library handles addresses and give it the value of sweat.readPointer. Then use our module base. Then the offsets, but the last one. So we will copy paste the offsets, but when we reach the last offset, we will add it outside of the read pointer function. This is because if we read the last offset, we will get the ammunition and not the ammo address. Now to read the current ammo, we will need to read the ammo address and return it as an int. We do that by using sweat.readInt. We can check if our application works this far by writing in the console some text and then our ammo. And as you can see, 20 in our console, 20 inside of the game. Let's have a loop so it updates the ammo constantly. Wow. Truly amazing. But if we wanted to change this value, 
we will use write instead of read. So let's overwrite the ammo with a number of 1337 or leads. I don't know. And would you look at that? Instead of having an ammo of 20, we have 1337 ammunition. This is how we change the values in games and read them. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you in the next one. If you have any suggestions of a tutorial, let me know in the comments and see you later.